everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple with another YouTube mini class for you today. And truly that's what it is today, a mini class. I have got so much technique and so much product to show you that as much as I want to chit chat and <laughs> tell cute stories, that's not going to happen today. I have got so much to show you and I think you are going to love all of it. You are going to learn in this YouTube. I just know it. There's going to be things that you might not have ever seen before and you're gonna learn something new and that is so exciting to me. Now quickly before we get started, I wanna send a big shout out to Bernie at Pam Pastels. Bernie, thank you so much for getting me the Susan's Garden Pastel Palette um, before anybody else. Thank you for sending it to me so we have it for this YouTube. Thank you for making sure that Scrapbooking Made Simple will be the first store to have it in the, in the country. I appreciate your efforts, it means so much to me. We could not have done this YouTube without your help. Second, I want to send a huge shout out to Sizzix. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for sending me samples of the Susan's Gardens dyes. The samples your designers make are absolutely stunning. And again, without them, this YouTube would not have been possible because the SMS girls are so busy filling orders right now, it would have just been impossible for them to sit down and do all of the samples that you have so kindly provided me to show off today. So if you are a YouTube watcher and and you already know all of the Pam Pastels and you already know all the Susan's Gardens, at the very least stay tuned to the end to see the samples because stunning is an understatement. Now, as you know, if you leave a comment on our YouTube, you stand a chance of winning a prize, yay! <laughs> and the more comments we get, the more prizes I'm going to give away because you can't have almost a thousand comments and give just two away. So this time I think we had close to 500 comments and I have chosen three winners for the YouTube from last week. So you all are gonna win some fabulous prizes from Scrapbooking Made Simple and I am so excited for you. First off, Cynthia Dennis, yay, Cynthia! Congratulations, my dear, you are a YouTube winner. Second, Sharon James, woo! Way to go, Sharon! You too are a YouTube winner. And our last YouTube winner is I Write 622. The letter I, W-R-I-T-E, 622. Whatever that means, yay, you won! <laughs> Congratulations! Now to claim your prizes, you need to give us a call here at the store. 661-298-1112 and ask for Naomi and she has the blue forms and she's a sweetie to talk to so Give her a call and give her all your information and she will get your prizes out. If you happen to be an international winner, I need you to email if you don't want to call. And I understand if you don't want to call. But just drop an email to asksms at earthlink.net. That's A-S-K-S-M-S at earthlink.net. And if you put in the subject line, I'm a YouTube winner or attention Naomi, she will get right back to you and get your prizes out to you as well. Congratulations, Cynthia Dennis. I write 622 and Sharon James, we're so excited for you. Yay! Now, if you want to be a YouTube winner, what do you do? Once you're done watching this, you're going to post a comment on our YouTube channel. And remember, iPads sometimes have a little difficulty posting a comment, so you might want to go to your laptop or your regular PC to, to post a comment, all right? Holy smokes, artichokes, I know I'm talking fast and that's because I know we have got so much to do. <laughs> I think I would be good as an auctioneer because <laughs> I talk so fast sometimes. <laughs> All right, we're going to tilt on down and I'm going to get started for today. And I really hope you enjoy this. This has been an amazing YouTube. I've had an amazing time playing with this product. And again, thank you to Pam Pastel. Thank you to Sizzix for supporting Scrapbooking Made Simple. It really does mean the world to us and we couldn't do it without you. Okay, down we go. Bye. How's that? Okay, good. Now I'll slow down talking <laughs> so that you can remember what I'm saying. First off, here's a sample that Sizzix sent us. Their designers did this and the flower in the middle is a Susan's Garden dye. And I believe Susan's last name is Susan Tierney. Could be wrong, Susan, don't hate me if I've got it wrong, I'm so sorry. But Susan is the one who has designed all of the most magnificent flowers for Sizzix and they now come in dyes. And they're just absolutely gorgeous and they are so easy to put together and I want to show you how to do that today. I also want to show you pan pastels because Susan has 
um, teamed up with Pan Pastels to make her own palette of Pan Pastels. And if you're not familiar with Pan Pastels, this is going to be a great opportunity to learn about them because it's almost as if you're dry painting, the blending that you can do with these. You can even erase them if you've made a mistake. And the, the pigment is so concentrated and saturated, it's gorgeous. And you can't make a mistake with them. But they also have a value that you can't get with an ink. So you can't do today's technique maybe with your memento inks and things like that. It just won't work. And that's why we have them in. Now I want to start a little bit about the tools you're going to need to make some of the flowers. And let me show off one of the other flowers. Oh yeah, is that fabulous? Yes, amazing, isn't it? That's paper, folks. That is paper. And while I'm not going to do the rose today, <laughs> I am going to show you how you could create this with their dyes. Is that not beautiful? So the tools. That rose would not have been made possible if you did not have the Susan's Gardens tools. And in the toolkit comes a couple different styluses. This one first has a super large ball at the end. It's a jumbo ball and then a medium ball. Now, if you've done... Um, if you have done dry embossing with a light box, you may have something that's about this size, but I don't think you have anything close to this size, and you're going to want that. It's very important. This stylus is for our leafing. When we put our veins in our leaves in a little curling tool, this has a mini ball on it. And there we have this end to add our veins to our leaves and things of that nature. This is, I'm calling it a loop tool. And it's a new tool. We had never seen a tool like this before, but I'm gonna show you why Susan created it, why she came up with it, and what we're going to use it for. And yes, it's one of the things that you absolutely use when you're doing the rose. Oh, it's fabulous. Finally, she's included some tweezers in her kit and a pair of scissors in her kit. And if you have some of these tools, that's good. You still may want to be uh, able to get the whole kit because then you get all the tools. You also get in the tool kit a couple pads. First off, you get this green pad, which we're going to use when we do our leaves. It's kind of felty, it's a little bit thick, it's a little bit cushiony, and you're going to use this specifically when we're doing our leaves. You get a thick foam pad. Now this is kind of similar to the foam pad we stamp into, our stamping mat, but she uses this to mold the flowers. And finally, you get a little piece of what I use all the time, which is a beautiful craft mat that absolutely nothing sticks to. So all of this comes in the tool kit. And, um, and if you don't have it, you're definitely going to want it. All right, let me move that out of the way. Now the dies we're gonna be working with are Sizzix dies, and they are uh, thinlets. They're thinlet dies, which means that they're a wafer thin die, and this edge right here, this is your cutting edge. So when we use this, we're going to use it with our multi-purpose platform completely closed. And it doesn't matter if you have uh, an extended multi-purpose platform with the new machine or a small multi-purpose platform with the older machine. You're still going to use it completely closed because these are considered a wafer die. Now what that means is that it won't go through really heavy material, but it will go through two pieces of cardstock without any problem. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to move these just out of the way for a few minutes. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to die cut. Now I have got my Sizzix die cut machine, the new version, the 2013 version, woohoo, which comes with the extended multi-purpose platform and the two clear plates. Now again, I'm going to keep my platform completely closed. And on the platform, it will show you that you can do your wafer dies, which means Sizzix or Spellbinders or Memory Box or My Favorite Things. All of those are wafer dies, and you're going to keep the platform completely closed. I'm going to slide my multi-purpose platform in. I'm going to put my Do Not Cut plate. Remember, I always take one plate and write Do Not Cut on it because I want that plate to stay as flat as possible, giving me a nice smooth work surface when I send it through my machine. I'm going to lay my dies with the ridge face up. Face up. Let's just get a couple of these on here. And like I said, you can do two sheets of paper at a time. So I'm going to grab 
two sheets of cardstock. I happen to have yellow here. This is um, Basil cardstock, the Prima uh, Prism, the Prism cardstock from Basil. I'm just going to lay it down, and you get everything you need to build that flower. These are all the petals for the flower that I'm going to build today. You also get the dies for the leaves. You get the dies for the center part, the stamus, stemus. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I'm not a big gardener. <laughs> My husband likes to garden. Actually, he likes to grow vegetables and fruits, and he's very good at it. But if we could just get our dogs <laughs> to stop eating it, oh my gosh. Okay, I have to tell you quickly. It was so bad. We have a plum tree, and it's all of about four feet. And we have a big dog, Spencer. And actually, we have two, Glinda. She's a big dog, too. A Gordon Setter and a Yellow Lab. And if you wouldn't know it, they don't even bother to wait for the plums to drop off the tree. They just kind of tilt their head up and reach up for them and eat them straight on the tree. Holy smokes, is that frustrating. <laughs> but you can't be mad at them because they're so darn cute. <laughs> Okay, I've put my dies down. <laughs> I've put my dies down and I've got my papers on top. I'm going to put my other cut plate and you can see that it's all cut into on top and I'm going to send it through my Big Shot machine. And if you hear some creaking and some cracks, that's okay. Oh, but listen. Oh, there was a little creak and a crack. That's okay. Let me put it off to the side. And here we go. Here they are. And I'm just going to pop those right out. Look at how easy they pop out. Two sheets of cardstock. No problem. Then I'm going to pull them from here. So I, can, I have enough petals now to make two of these flowers. And the flower that I am making today is this one right here. Only I'm using yellow paper and not pink. So I've got my flower petals all done. And they do, they look just like paper, so what am I going to do with them? How am I going to build them and, and work with them so that all of a sudden they become looking realist, uh, realistic, uh, lifelike? Well, that's where the toolkit comes in and that's where it becomes really important. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my um, pad here, my thicker pad, and I'm going to put my flower down. Now I'm going to take the, the back side of the flower. This happens to have a little bit of texture on the front, so I know that's the side that I want facing out. But the back side of my flower. And I'm going to take my stylus with either my big tip or my small tip, and I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to start molding my flower. And there really is no right or wrong. You just want to get in there and give a good press down. And what you'll see is that the flower will start to curl. Do you see that? The flower is curling all on its own just by using the stylus. It will form little um, edges and crinkle down and it will become absolutely gorgeous. Now I could take it and I could again do it on the front side to add a little bit more dimension to it. Depending on how I want my flower to curl. But it's not, it's not difficult and it's, there's not a precise way of doing it. You just want to get in there and roll that stylus around so that your flower starts to curl and becomes a beautiful petal. Yummy! It's that simple to just make your flowers. So I'm going to take one, turn it onto the back side, and get in there with my stylus and just rub it and get a good push. Get a good push. Look at that. See how it just curls that to make the most beautiful flower petal? It's so easy. Now you would do on this flower, we would do six of these. So I'm not going to do six for you because you get the general idea. But now we've got this beautifully curled paper. What next? Well, next is to color it. I want to add a little more texture there. Next is to color it, and that's where the pan pastels come in, because I want to color this before I start to build it. You don't want to make your flower and then start to color it. You want to, you want to go ahead and, while they're in this state, add your color to them. So that's where my pan pastels come in. So I'm done with this for right now, and I'm going to set it to the side, 
and I'm going to bring in my pan pastels. And this is the palette that's called Susan's Garden. It comes with all 10 colors, and these are colors that Susan uses for her flowers. Now, you're given a black and a white color, not because she uses them for her flowers, but these are your colors that you can blend with here with these to either make them darker or lighter. It's almost like dry painting because the colors are so vivid and so pigmented that they blend beautifully. They're, I would almost put them comparable to a Copic marker because when you see what I can do with them, you're just not going to believe it. So the set comes like this, and you get the 10 colors, you get the little palette tray, you get several little tools, and, um, and to finish your flowers, it really is magnificent. I'm gonna open it up, and I've got my colors here. Now, this is a pastel pressed pan, which means instead of like a, a pastel um, pencil or a pastel, uh, I don't know what they sell them as, but the, the little pastels that you would color with, being that this has been pressed into a pan, it gives you a much greater control over what you're doing. It gives you far more blending options with what you're doing, and it keeps the, the dust down. These pastels have almost no dust to them whatsoever. It, they're just magnificent, and Pan Pastel is the only company that has done this and brought this out, and they've done a wonderful job. They are so user-friendly. I was a little nervous about trying them, I have to tell you, and when I saw how easy it was, I, I really couldn't believe it. These are artist-quality pastels that are user-friendly to any any level of crafter, and, and that's so important to me that everybody be successful in what they're doing. So I'm gonna show you how to use these pan pastels, and I'm gonna show you quickly what they can do. So I've got my petals over here. I'm gonna come back to those in just a minute. And I've got my pastels right here. Now I've got my tip here. You don't need a tip for every single color. All you have to do is wipe your tip off, and you're good to go to your next. So if I wanted yellow, put my yellow in, a couple swipes. You don't want to swipe so much that you start seeing dust because then you're, you're loading your, um, your brush too much. But a couple swipes and look at the color. It's just like painting. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now I could dab that off and I could go into another color. I don't have to change my tip and I could add another color right over the top. What you do with these colors is entirely up to you. You can put them on so thin that they're almost transparent, or because the pigments are so saturated, you could make them heavy. You can go in there, let's put another color down, wipe that off, get another red, and you could go in there and you could blend. You can absolutely blend the colors. Can you see how it's blending? So I took the red, the yellow, and the orange, and I blended them together. And look at there's virtually no dust. For pastels, that's a really important thing, almost no dust. But let's say you wanted to make your own color, okay? You take a little bit of your yellow. You can go straight into your red. And again, blend your own colors. There's no cross-contamination. If I took a little bit of my red and put it into my yellow, you see there's some there. I just have to go in and pick it up. Blend it right out, pick it up, and it's gone. No cross-contamination. That's what I mean when I say they're a lot like a, a, a Copic marker, that you can do tip-to-tip -tip blending with Copics. You can do pan-to-pan -pan blending with pastels, with these pan pastels, and the color doesn't move. If you flick it, you're not going to have little flakes fall off. It adheres beautifully. And because the colors are so soft, you can't get this look with an ink. You just can't. I, I wish I could tell you that Memento would do this or um, some chalk-based inks would do this, but it just won't. It has to be a pastel, and these truly are the best pastels on the market. They are so user-friendly. Kids, adults, any level of crafter can use these. Now, the black and the white are used to tone. 
So if I have a red and I don't want it as bright as it is, I just use the white to tone it to a pink. If I want more white in there, I add more. I can make it to whatever color I want. If I want that red to be a little bit darker, I take my black and a little bit of red and go in there and get some more red. I got a lot of black. And I can darken my red. It's entirely what you want to do. Boy, I got a lot of black in there. <laughs> you don't need that much black. A little black goes a long way. Let me just pick that up. Oh, there we go. There, now my red is a little bit darker. Easy to do. Okay, so that is what Pan Pastels, oops, that's what Pan Pastels are based off of. And the little, the little sponges come, they're sold, they, they come with the kit. There's a couple that come with the kit, but then you can buy replacement ones. And as you can see, I'm just wiping it off and moving to my next color. And if it gets too much on this side, I just take it off and rotate it and I can use the back side. It's what you want to do with these colors. You have such control if you want to do something thin. If you want to do something thin, you can go in there and do thin lines. Whatever, it's, it, they're so easy, they're so user friendly. And then, if you want to erase them, let's say you did it and you're not crazy about it, you take your pencil eraser, any pencil eraser, and you can erase. Look at that, is that amazing? That's because they're dry all the time. You can go in there and you can erase your color and lay another color over the top. I mean, talk about, <laughs> talk about not making an error. You can't mess up, you just erase it. <laughs> That's my kind of crafting, folks. <laughs> so that is a little bit about the Pam Pastels. They come in 80 colors. We will have them open stock um, at some point in all the colors, but we are gonna start with the Susan's Garden Kit. And, um, and hopefully I think you'll see the value in these because they can be used for anything. They can be used to color the flowers like we're going to do. They can be used on your embossing folders. They can be used to color just about anything. And the colors really are absolutely beautiful. You cannot get this from a watercolor pencil. You cannot get this from a, an ink out there. I don't care who makes the ink. You can't do it with Tim Holtz. You can't do it with Memento. It has to be a pastel and the pan pastels are the best. So back to my flowers. I've got my flower and I took my stylus and remember I went in there and I gave it a, a whirl so it started to bend it and add some definition to it. I'm going to color that flower now. I'm going to take a little bit of my, oh, let's take a little bit of my yellow and orange, and I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to add some color. And a little bit of my darker red. Let's see if I can move this over here so you can see the colors I'm using. So I used a little bit of my yellow, a little bit of my orange, and I'm going to use a little bit of my, of my darker red and I'm going to go in there. and I'm just going to add some color. And let's grab another petal. And the petals are meant to look a little bit different. They're not all to be the same. So some might have more, some might have less. And I have to tell you, they're not absolutely gorgeous when you're looking at them by themselves. You're like, hmm. But when you build the flower, when you finally put them together, they look amazing. You want to add a little more definition. You go back in. And they really do look absolutely phenomenal. Now the Pan Pastels adhere to the paper so well that you don't need to put anything over the top. They don't come off. They're just beautiful. Let's just do one more. I know I had another one done, but okay, we'll just do another one from start. So I'm gonna mold this real quick. And look at it curl. Just mold that really quick and pick up a couple colors. Let's use more orange on this one. 
pick up a couple colors, a little bit of dark in there, just down at the bottom to give some definition. I'm going to leave that one almost all undone. So I've got my petals now colored. Now what do I do next? Well that's easy. With each die set you're going to get this little base piece. Looks just like this. Okay? And that's what you're going to attach your flowers to. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to take your ball here and you need to press it right down into the center. I'm going to use the big one. Press it right down into the center. See how hard I'm pressing it in? That's going to make this piece 3D. It's going to make it pop. Which means when I go to attach my petals, they're going to attach going up as opposed to leaving it flat. I want my flower to be upright. I want it to look realistic. I don't want it to be flat. So you want to go ahead and take that piece and just put the ball right there, squish it in, and make it look like a little cup. Then I'm going to take my pieces and I'm going to start attaching. Now if you were doing a flower like this, you would do your first cup and lay your flowers around, your petals around. Then on top of that you would add a second cup and lay the next layer of flowers around. Then you would add a third cup and just glue the flowers around all the way till you're into the middle. So you just build on top of each other. It really is not difficult at all. Now to add the glue, the glue is a very specific glue. We use Crafters Pick the Ultimate. This is the glue you're going to want to use. It's very thick. It is, it's very heavy. It dries crystal clear and when you put something in place, it stays in place. Yes, we have this in stock. We have 100 bottles right now. So the ultimate glue is the one you're going to want. And when you see how heavy and thick it is, just by pouring it, you'll, you'll see that. Now I've taken the little craft mat that has come with your toolkit and I'm going to put my glue straight onto there. I mean the glue just, it, it, it doesn't move. <laughs> it's, it's very thick. But what that allows you to do is to pick up some of the glue, like scoop it up a little bit, and just put it right onto your, your flower. And it stays. I'm going to pick up another glue and on each of these little points, each of these little points tells me I need to have a petal coming off each of those little points. I'm going to scoop it up and put it down. And I would do that until I go all the way around to all six points. Okay? Now when I've done that, I need this glue to dry. So where am I going to put that? Well, I want it to dry up. So Susan's Garden has come up with these little flower cups, little flower cups. And if I had all of my little points in there, I would set it in here and kind of mold my flower in there. And when it's dry, your flower is going to come out all up and ready to go. Now I'm going to tell you, you know me, I think you should buy what you have to buy and what you can do at home, do at home. Now these are very convenient to have and we absolutely will sell them. But I can't imagine that you couldn't use an egg crate for the exact same thing. Susan, I love you. <laughs> but I'd rather have them buy more of your dyes than the little than the little egg cup thing. And I think an egg, a little egg thing, a little egg crate that you get from the supermarket when you buy your 18 eggs, I think you could do the exact same thing. But that's me. You guys try at home. If you want the cups, we have them. You can buy them. But I'd much rather see you end up with another another dye or something along that line than, than these if you can make this at home. So now I'm going to leave that in there and it's going to dry. Now of course I haven't built the whole thing, but here this one's all done. So I've built the flower and it's completely dry. Now I could go in there 
And I haven't actually finished the flower because there's no leaves and there's no middle part yet. But if I wanted to, I could go in there and now would be the time that I could take and kind of mold my flower to whatever I want it to be. I could take my tweezers and just kind of give it a little roll here and there and mold my flower to be whatever it wants to be. And it's dried completely up, completely clear. It really is simple. Now, if I was doing a bigger flower and I wanted more petals, I would take another one of my little cups, I would push down into it, let's find my stylus, I would push down into it, I would lay it in, and I would start building, glue it in, and I would start building the next level of petals to come off of it. That's how you build your flowers. But this one's obviously not done. We still have leaves to do and we have the center part to do. But look at how the difference is when you add the pan pastels. You've taken a piece of paper, a piece of paper, and you've transformed it into something absolutely gorgeous. Paper, I, people look at these and when we showed them on Facebook and, and people were emailing, are those real? No, it's paper. Take all of that excess paper, you have those little scraps of cardstock and make beautiful flowers to decorate your cards with. And, Oh, wait till you see the samples. And it's the pan pastels that make the difference because you will never get the look that we're gonna show you with anything else than a pastel chalk or a pastel. And these are artist quality, so you know you're getting the very, very best and they're user friendly. As opposed to having a crayon or a, a pencil or whatever they call the sticks, those you have to draw with and then blend out. Being that they're already in the pan, you just take it and blend your colors. So much fun. I've really had a good time with them. Okay, so I'm going to put that one aside because we have to talk about leaves. Now I've got a bunch of different leaves here. Oh, there's my other one. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> and I said there's a leaf tool. Yes, there is. This is what's going to draw your veins and your um, your little points on your leaves and to do that you're going to take and you're going to use this pad. We're going to use the light green pad and that doesn't have as much cushion to it and the leaf doesn't move around too much on it and what's important to know is that you do it from the back side. So if you've got a paper that's got a texture on one side um, you're going to do it on the opposite side. If you've got a paper that has no texture on either side then it isn't going to matter. But I'm going to take my leaf, let me see if I can find, there's a bigger one. I'm going to take my leaf and with my stylus, and do you see I have it the point going up, not going down, I have the point going up. I'm going to take it and I'm going to draw a vein all the way down. I have now put a vein into my leaf. Now this is on the back side, but when you turn it over, it looks like it's been embossed. Okay? Beautiful, isn't it? Now you can take and you, with your tweezers, you can grab the leaf and you can kind of pinch it and twist it, however it is that's going to work for you. You can pinch it and twist it right on that, right on that point to give the leaf even a more realistic look. And because it's like it's embossed in there, it folds right on that, right on that uh, line beautifully. And you just take your tweezers and you just give a pinch and a twist. And that's it, easy to do. And my leaf looks even more realistic. Now if I want it, I could draw little veins on it. Again, I don't garden, so I don't know what leaves have veins and what leaves don't. <laughs> But all leaves need veins, right? So I'm going to once again with my point side going up. You don't want the point actually against the paper. You want the point side going up. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to draw down my center vein. And then I can just, gosh, do points go up or do it go down? Well, I'm going to go down. You can just then draw in. Your, your lines from your leaves. 
And again, this is on the reverse side. This is the back side of the paper because, see, when I turn it over, I want it to look like it's embossed. Then I can take my tweezers, get in there, and just kind of pinch it down to give even a more realistic look. And that is how you do your leaves. It's important to use this pad because with this one, it's got a little bit too much gush in it. You don't want as much gush when you're trying to do that leaf. Okay? That's how you use this stylus. Now, I talked to you a little bit about the looping one, and I want to show you what that does. So I'm going to take another leaf, or an, another petal, and I'm going to start with my ball stylus and I'm just going to go in there and give it a good push but then I'm going to take this leafing and I'm going to pull it out so this or this tool here this loop tool and I'm going to take it and I'm going to take it to from the base of my uh, petal and I'm going to pull it out from the base of my petal and I'm going to pull it out from the base and out. And that gives you a whole nother look of texture, a whole nother dimension of texture where on the flower, on the rose, you can see how it, with that tool, it just crinkles the paper just perfectly like a real flower. It gives all of those little personalities to each little petal to make it look absolutely real. So I've taken it, and you've got two different sides, a bigger side and a smaller side, depending on the, the petal you're working with, but you take it and you just pull it out to add even more texture. Look at that, do you see how I've got the vein in there now? It's just like a real petal would be. And then I would take my Pam Pastel, oh my little thingy keeps coming off. I must not have it on all the way. Let's use this one. You use your Pam Pastel to go in there and just add some color. A little bit heavier down at the bottom, a little bit lighter at the top to really give it that realistic look because of course the sun comes down so it's going to the the flowers are going to be lighter at the top and heavier darker at the bottom just like anybody uh, anything else that's getting sun and shade and highlight and low light and then I would take it and I would see this one's drying see how it's standing up it's drying I would add a little bit of my glue and put it right on in here's my glue A little bit of my glue, just scoop it up. See how thick that glue is? Scoop it up and put it right on. And then set them right back, add them all in and set them right on back down. And when it's all dry, they'll stand up beautifully for you. Just like that one. Now we also have the center part to talk about real quickly. And with the dies, you get this little piece here, depending on what kind of center the flower has. And this is what it cuts out. And with this, what you would do is I would add a little bit of the glue, a little bit of glue to each of the tops. A little bit of glue. And then we have Ultra Fine Flower Soft. You really want to use the ultra fine flower soft and not the standard flower soft to do this. The flat, standard flower soft is a bit chunky. The ultra fine flower soft is very easy to use. It's, it's ground finer. It looks fabulous. And I'm just going to take this and put these in there. Do, 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 do. Cover them up. And when they've dried, I would take it and just roll it into each other and then glue it and put it into the center of my flower. Put a little bit of glue down there and stick it into the center of my flower. 
and that will complete your flower. Add your leaves, a little bit of glue to add your leaves to your flower and you just build it however you want and you take your tweezers and you tweak it however you want. You want to curl it down, you grab and you kind of curl it down. Your little tweezers and you just roll it and manipulate it to however it makes you happy. So this one, I only did one of the leaves, one of the petals, so you could see the pan pastel from that to uh, just a plain. And you can see how I've added the little center part with the flower soft and I've got a couple leaves coming off of it. But it's absolutely gorgeous and very simple to do. It really is just adding a little bit of glue and some paper. What you can do with all that paper you have is amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I'm going to put those over there. And I'm going to go over real quickly, what did we talk about today? Because we talked about a lot. We talked about the Susan's Gardens dies. They're from Sizzix. They, she makes, I want to say, 12 or 15 different flowers. And yes, we have all of them. I'll tell you that the mini petals and the mini daisies and the rose are selling out very quickly. And, um, and so we only have a limited amount of those to sell, but we've got the rest of everything else. In the die set, you get all of the wonderful dies that you will need to make the flowers. And the dies cut basic paper, and you can cut two at a time. Easy to do. You're going to want to use the Susan's Garden Stylus Toolkit because that's what's going to allow you to shape these into beautiful flowers. And I mean, look at that. It, it, it really, there's not a lot of technique needed. People look at these and think it's really a technique. I mean, it's very difficult, but it's not. You just roll that stylus on over and the flower curls and bends to itself. You take the loopy one and you can drag it on out to add some beautiful lines and veining to your flowers. And it's, they're done. Then you take your amazing pan pastels and you play with your colors. You play with them. You make whatever you want to be happy. If I don't want to use the, the oranges and the uh, yellows, I can go in there and I can add some of the purples to my flowers. It's whatever it is that you want to do to your flower. You can color it any color you want. And if you're using a white or a cream, you even then have more opportunity to color whatever you want to color. Super easy to use. And because they're in a pan, which a pan means like a little pressed powder makeup kit, they go forever. The pigment is really strong, really fun, and they make very little mess. And if I don't like it, no problem. I can just take my eraser, well I hate to erase on this one, but I can erase my color and I can start all over again and layer a different color on the top. Talk about user friendly. <laughs> oh my gosh. When I saw that you could erase them, I thought, oh, somebody was thinking about me when they were thinking about crafting. <laughs> so easy to use the pan pastels. The Susan's Garden palette, it comes with these colors. You get 10 colors. You're going to get a couple of the different brushes and the different tips. And um, pan to pan blending. It's like dry painting. It's amazing, but they are pastels. And, and their artist quality, and you can't get the look from anything else that we currently sell, at least. Now, in the toolkit, you're going to remember that you're going to use the gush pad for when you're molding your flowers, the green pad when you're working on your leaves, and you're going to use the leaf stylus, and they give you a little piece of the, the um, craft mat that I use, because once this glue is dry, you can just peel it right off. Easy to do. And we have got the flower soft that we have used to do the cute little centers of the flowers. And the glue is Crafter's Pick the Ultimate. So we've got all of that for you. I think once you start playing with the pan pastels, you're going to have an amazing time. And once you start building flowers, you're not going to want to stop. <laughs> 
I didn't want to stop. I was playing and playing. It's like, I've got work to do. I've got to stop this. But you have to give credit where credit is due. And Susan, um, teaming up with Sizzix, they've done an amazing job. And Bernie over at Pam Pastel, we really appreciate all of her efforts. Now, I have got some fabulous samples to show you. And, um, oh, well, let's start with some of the product first. So just some of the sampler or some of the sets. There's the mini daisies. This one's going to be a little difficult to get. We've got some, but not a lot. There's the dog. Is that the dogwood? Isn't that gorgeous? I'm going to show you a dogwood oh, that they've done. The pansy. Uh, the hibiscus. The quince. Different leaves. And that looks like the sunflower. Now there's more than this. I'm just showing you a few, but the sunflower, and they do come with the leaves, but if you wanted different leaves to choose from, they've got a couple sets that are just leaves. Let's see, we also have, if you wanted to do the Susan's Garden Garden Fairy, we've got the dies and the stamps to do that, and I'm going to show you a sample of this in just a minute. So to build the body and to do the wings and to die cut everything, we've got that. Here's the Garden Fairy body. And last but not least, the wheelbarrow. And I'm going to show you, well, that's what the, the wheelbarrow, that's what the rose was in, was in the wheelbarrow. All Sizzix dies, all designed by Susan. Okay, let's look at samples. Well, I already showed you this one, which is absolutely gorgeous. Then we have here, look at those flowers. They really just look real. Let's see. I've got feeling a little wicked today. <laughs> Isn't that cute? But look at that flower. And that's just paper paper and some pan pastel and some glue. Beautiful samples. Look at, isn't that magnificent? And again, this was done on cream or white paper and used pan pastels to color the entire thing yellow. It didn't start as yellow paper, it started as cream paper. Gorgeous. We have the sunflower. Beautiful. We have another wheelbarrow. There's the dogwood. There's the flower I was doing today, only done in all oranges with the flower soft on the top. There's the sunflower, done with the ultra fine um, flower soft in there. Ultra fine flower soft in the center. And look at how it's built. Just beautiful. Let's see, we've got a few more cards. We've got another, the mini, I think mini, is that mini sunflower or mini daisy? Cute, isn't it? And again, the paper did not start out as yellow. That was all done with pan pastels. And here we go. Oh, I hear them outside. It must be close to the store opening. <laughs> I gotta hurry up. <laughs> And then we've got the birdhouse. Okay, and I wanted to show you some of the garden fairies put together. How cute. Can you see how darling that is? And look at the wings on the back and everything. It's so stinking cute. And they're all positionable. So we've got this one. We've got this one where she's holding the flower and the back, and that's just doing the leaves and layering them, brick laying them almost, right on top of each other. Super cute. And last, look at that. Is that not darling? All done with the Susan's Garden stamps and dyes and flowers and the pan pastels. Look at the pan pastels on that. 
Okay, so what do we have on YouTube Yummy? Let me scroll on up because I can see customers. They're actually out there waiting for me to open the door. They're going, open, open, open. <laughs> I feel so bad, I'm sorry. Hi guys, <laughs> oops. <laughs> So what do we have for you on a YouTube Yummy this week? We have all the Susan's Gardens dies on a YouTube Yummy this week. We have the tools on a YouTube Yummy this week. The wheelbarrow will, of course, be on a YouTube Yummy, and the Garden Fairy will be on a YouTube Yummy because they're a part of the Susan's Garden collection, all from Sizzix. We'll also have the glue on a YouTube Yummy for you. We will have the Flower Soft on a YouTube Yummy for you. And most important, to go with those dyes, we will have the Susan's Gardens palette of pan pastels on a YouTube Yummy for you. This week, we're going to do it a little different. Instead of 15% off, we're going to offer you a 20% off discount on all these products. So this week, the YouTube Yummy is even better. Where are you going to get all this great product? Well, you're going to go to www shop at sms.com the word shop the word at sms.com or www.scrapbooking-made-simple.com both of them will get you to the exact same place please know the susan's gardens palettes are going to be shipping to us tomorrow it's a five day ship time to us they will not be here until at least mid next week but we will be the first ones to have them yay <laughs> So they're drop shipping them to us tomorrow. They just got the packaging for them this morning. What they sent me was the prototype. I, it doesn't even have any packaging or anything on it. It's, um, I mean, they just sent me the prototype, which was very kind of them to do. So when you get yours, it'll have all the Susan's Garden packaging. And of course you get the pan pastels and some of the brushes. Um, and that's all going to be at 20% off this week. So we've got Susan's Garden product, Ultra Fine, Flower Soft product, Pan Pastel product, all 20% off. And I really do hope that you, you learned some things today. They really are so beautiful and they're so much better in person. I hope it translates on camera. Um, but anyway, that's it for today. I'm done. I know it's been long, so I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for staying with me and shopping either in store or at www.shop.sms or www.scrapbooking-made-simple.com. I will see you next time in about 10 days. And if you want to win, if you want to be like Cynthia Dennis or I Write 622 or Sharon James, what are you going to do? You're going to leave a comment on this YouTube and maybe next time you see me, you'll be the lucky winner. Yay! Have a good week, you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.